Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. Oh, yeah, guys, I'm floating on top of a fence post. That's pretty cool, huh? Like, there's nothing underneath me right now. Or at least it looks that way, kind of. <laughs> Except I showed you the fence post and gave it away. Oh, well. Yeah, guys, so welcome back, welcome back. Uh, last episode, we set up that building right behind me, and that is our passive mob spawner. And that thing in there contains the only grass in this area around that will allow regular passive mobs like uh, animals, sheeps, cows, pigs, yes I said sheeps with an extra S, uh, chickens and horses and things like that to spawn. So yeah, that's really, really awesome. Uh, we saw it working last time and we were going to set up an automatic way to flush the mobs off these pads, send them down in the collection area down here, and ship them off to the nether. The problem is we ran out of string. We need string to make bows. We need bows to make dispensers. We only had enough to make seven dispensers. So yet yeah, not enough to complete this project. Uh, each pad is 16 long. We have like six of those. So we need like 100 dispensers or something like that. And we fell short. Let's take a look real quick. See if we got anything to spawn in this thing. Oh, I hear sheep somewhere. Okay, so they, we definitely got sheep to spawn somewhere. Yeah, here we go. We got some sheep there. And yeah, nothing else here. Um, I also have some donkeys that spawned. And we haven't put those in the nether just yet. And those guys are also taking up the mob cap. Um, yeah, we definitely need to get rid of these guys. I removed the grass from down here in these pits. So the only grass now should be in that building. We can also expand it up higher and get more spawning area in there. Should we choose to do so? Like the spawning just isn't enough or whatever. Uh, yeah, I also have my regular horse here, so we need to get rid of those donkeys. I've already broken one of them. It was kind of caught in a corner. It was like, I was trying to remove the grass, and it somehow glitched into these backwards stair blocks, and I couldn't get it out. So yeah, anyway, I had to right-click on it, saddle it, and all of that stuff. So it's got 11 hearts, and it's just a donkey. It, it doesn't really jump high. It doesn't really move fast. I don't think you can really get anything special with these guys. Hmm, I don't know. I haven't really done any donkey breeding before. Well, <laughs> I bred some to get some with, like, more health. But I had never, like, tried to get them that are faster or jump higher. I don't even know if that's possible. But, yeah, so the next thing we need to do is get these guys out of here. Clean up our spawn area. Um, actually, I think with the donkeys, we need to put those in, like, a specific spot. Whoa, whoa, somebody's dying. Uh, this horse is dying for <laughs> some reason. Yeah, we need to get these guys in a specific spot, kind of like this guy down here, so they don't glitch into the blocks and then take suffocation damage. Hmm. Maybe I should go ahead and start clearing out some of this stuff. That's lava. Oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. Nope, oh, I just threw something. <laughs> ah, what did I throw? Maybe it was nothing bad that I threw in there. I'm going to have to look back at the footage. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, uh, stupid lava hidden back behind there. Yeah, that could have been bad if it, like, got on one of our animals or whatever. Okay, I think we're fine now. Yeah, it felt like I threw something in the lava. I see all my diamond tools, so maybe it was, like, a torch or a stone brick or something. I don't know. Anyway, I think we're fine. <laughs> or was it my diamond hoe? It might have been my diamond hoe that I just threw in there. Oh, no! <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I think that's what it was. Okay, well, derp. Yeah, the uh, the Q is right next to the W key. Very easy to toss a weapon instead of whatever. Anyway, I think we're done with the diamond hole. <laughs> that sucks. All right, let's go ahead and clear out a little spot here. Yeah, we want to have some area cleared out so we can uh, put these animals in their pens. Um, some kind of a pen, holding cell, or whatever, uh, so they don't suffocate in blocks when we go back and forth, they don't get bumped into things like that. Uh, let, let's go ahead and get this going. I want to save at least two donkeys. Another thing I could do is I could take them over to my jungle area. That's quite a walk. Where'd the donkey? There it is. Let's go ahead and stick this guy right in there. Yep, that should be fine. They should be able to get out. Um, I kind of feel like I want to cap this off, too, because if one of these horses get in there, they could potentially push the animals into the walls. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should cap those off somehow. Oh, we got a big man in there. <laughs> All right, well, I think for now we're good. Um, I'm going to have to figure out what we're going to do with the rest of the donkeys. I need to set up some kind of an area for them. 
Um, I guess two of my horses came through into the overworld. Yeah, these guys need to go back through. Yeah, it's getting kind of annoying <laughs> having to constantly move these guys around. There we go. Now they're back in the nether. No more problems here in the overworld. All right, so another thing. Uh, last episode, we were talking about... Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about a way to collect string. And I asked you guys if there were any nearby mine shafts or spider spawners or things like that um, that other people are playing on the seed might know about. And as it turns out, in episode four, uh, somebody mentioned that to me in my comments, is that over here, yeah, over here by our village that we have, there actually is a spider spawner and I did find it before. I had just completely forgot about it. Uh, let's see, yeah, we'll just cross right here. Yeah, so there is a spider spawner. I did show it to you guys very, very briefly. Let's see, where is it? It's somewhere over here. No, let's see, where is it? Is it right here? Yeah, I think it's right down there. Uh, let's dig a little hole, put this horse in. I don't want it following me or getting into that lava down there. Something nasty could happen to it. Will it fit in this? There we go. Okay, so we'll leave the horse right there. We'll go down and take a look. So if I remember correctly, it should just be right here down at the bottom of this cave. And then, yeah, I put this cobble here a long time ago. Sounds like we got some monsters in here. Got a skeleton up there anyway. But yeah, right over here, just right around the corner, there actually is a spider spawner. So that's really awesome. I think we're going to go ahead and set that up to be a uh, spawn trap. We need to collect ourselves a good amount of string. I think we needed, what was it? I said 100 dispensers. Each bow is three strings, so we need 300 string. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna take a little bit of time to collect the mobs, but the first thing we really need to do with this thing is expand this out. We need it to be, uh, what is it, nine by nine now? So it needs to go out four blocks uh, in every side. And now, why is there a chicken down here? What the heck? Oh, you know, there must have been a zombie pigman or a zombie that spawned a zombie jockey. Is that what they're called? Chicken jockey? Yeah, one of those guys must have spawned down here. That must be what that's from. Yeah, that's another problem, though. Um, when you're trying to keep your animal count low, like we're doing in the spawn chunks, we don't want any other animals around because we want the maximum amount of spawns for our passive mob spawner. Uh, things like that can really hamper it because, you know, a zombie spawns with the chicken, the zombie despawns, and then you now have a chicken eating up a mob cap somewhere down in a cave somewhere, and you have no idea why or where or anything like that. Yeah, that could be very annoying. I don't know what we're going to do to prevent that. I guess the only thing we could do would be to light up all the caves and stuff. Three, four, right there. Yeah. Okay, so this side needs to be pushed back a little bit. Whoops. So one, two. Yeah, we're going to make some walls here. I don't know exactly how we're going to set up this mob trap. We could do like a fall design. Uh, we could just bring them directly out of the area and then use like a uh, splash potion of poison and splash potion of harming to kill them. We might end up doing it that particular way. Yeah, I think if we do a fall trap, that's going to be a big, a big project. We're going to have to dig out a lot of area for something we're probably not going to use that often. Uh, we do need string for things here and there. I mean, eventually we will set up a proper mob farm. But for now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and dig this all out. Uh, make just a little spawner. We want to drop them a little bit so it gets out of range of this, the spawner block itself. We want to push the spiders over to somewhere and probably just collect them, kind of like you do with a cave spider spawner. Yeah, we'll collect them in like a little area. Um, and then, yeah, we'll poison them and then splash potion of harming to kill them. I think that's probably going to be the best way of doing it. Okay, guys, let me go ahead and finish digging this out, get the rest of the spawn trap thing or spawner trap taken care of. And I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Alright guys, so I made some progress here on the spider trap, and I kind of wanted to show you guys what I'm doing here before I complete everything. Uh, it's mostly done. Uh, <laughs> so let me go ahead and show you it. Okay, so we have the uh, the 9x9 room. We just have the torches here to prevent any spiders from spawning. Uh, since this is a spider, it's only one tall. We only need to have one block of space on top of the spawner for a new spider to spawn. Uh, so spiders can spawn at this level 
at the level of the spawner and one block below it. Uh, with a two tall mob trap, you need to have this two blocks above the spawner. Otherwise, when a mob tries to spawn at this level, its head will be in the block and it just will cancel the spawn. So you basically will lose that on the third of your spawnable space. But with spiders, yeah, we only need one space above. Okay, anyway, so we have water along the back wall here, all pushing forward. And the water pushes forward. Uh, we have a blank spot right here, and then we go into stairs. Now, the mob uh, spiders are too wide, so when they hit this spot right here, they're going to start uh, moving up the stairs, and they're still going to be pushed along by this water. And what should happen is that they get pushed into this bit of water here, which will push them all the way over to that side down there. Might be a little hard to see. Let's put some torches. So then I have yet another bucket of water here. So that's our main stream that pushes them over. And it goes right here into another water source, which pushes them even further along. I have this block right here just to keep it so the spiders don't jump around. They don't climb. The only thing they can do is just continue along this path right here. So we go from the stairs to the solid. And yeah, it's two by one so a spider can fit through. Now this part right here might be a little bit confusing. It's kind of hard to see. Um, so this water pushes them onto stairs and then they climb up one block just like they did back over here. And one, when they get up at the top of the stairs, they're going to be in this source block of water right here. This is just one source block of water that is starting right here and going forward one block. So the spider is going to get into this. It's going to continue to be pushed forward by this stream so it should push them all the way up against the wall here and then they should be in this little two by two area all right so beyond that i have two solid source blocks of water here so when the spider's here uh it's going to be like moving around it's going to hit these it's going to climb up and we got two more source blocks of water here it's going to hit those and it's going to continue to swim up so right about here is where the spider should collect now the reason why i have all these extra source blocks of water. Um, when mobs bump into each other side to side, they kind of push each other around. But if they float up into each other, like in water for instance, you can put a whole bunch of mobs in one little spot, they'll clump up. And when they clump up enough, at least this happened with cave spiders before, when they clump up enough, they'll be able to just climb up, uh, a, well I guess a two by two in this case, but like with cave spiders it'd be a one by one. And they'd be able to sit wherever you wanted them. So I don't know if that's going to happen with these spiders. I haven't tested this before. I'm just kind of going off of what I've done before in the past and what I know of spider behavior. So we'll test this out and see if this actually works. Hopefully it will. And hopefully uh, I explained that well enough what we're doing. Yeah, we're just flushing all the mobs from the spawn room over to a 2x2. Two two, and then hopefully they will clump up on some source blocks of water over there. It's just a little bit of signs to keep the water flowing where we want it and just having some source blocks yeah so that's what it looks like up here so the spider should end up right up here by the water and then they should be able to climb up and yeah hopefully we'll be able to do something with this i'm not sure how we're going to get these mobs to do what we want them to basically i just want them clumped up so we can throw potions at them for now um, maybe we should do like fence posts on top or iron bars, probably fence posts. Let's, oh, I have a crafting table on me. I thought I left it down there. Yeah. So let's make some fence posts real quick. See if we can do that. Um, I'm trying to remember what the recipe is. <laughs> is it sticks and then planks in the center? Or is that the fence gate? That's the gate. Okay. So it's going to be extra planks. So maybe like this, oop, oop. like that, like that. Six fences, that should be more than enough. And my inventory is so out of control right now. What do we get rid of? I guess we don't need the chicken. Okay. So do that, that, and that. And then the spiders can kind of like hang out here and we can attack them or whatever. All right, so the next step to see if this actually is gonna work. I have, I have high hopes. I have, I'm pretty confident that it's gonna work. We need to get rid of these torches, though. Spider spawned. Okay, let's get rid of that one spider for now. Get rid of these things. We need to get rid of that and this. Is it, there another torch in here? No. Okay, so it should be ready to go. 
All we need to do is hang out over here. The spiders should track us. So not only will the water push them, but it should be tracking us. And if everything goes correctly, we should start seeing spiders collecting down here. So I hear a spider. Am I seeing a spider down there? I thought I saw something moving. Maybe I've done something incorrect here. <laughs> we need to get in there and see what's going on. Yeah, I thought I saw a spider down there moving, but not... No, no, I guess I just see water. It could be that they're just climbing up in the corner. No, they are down there. No, they're going through. Kind of. We might need a second set of water source blocks to push them in there a little bit more. So what happened over here? Oh, look at this. Okay, so yeah. Can these guys touch me? No, but that's exactly what we want to happen. We want them to clump up just like that. Whoop. Skeleton. What the heck? How did a skeleton get down there? I don't eat <laughs> What? How did it... Oh, maybe a skeleton spawned on like some of that spot where the signs are? I don't know. That is really weird. Let's take a look. Yeah, a skeleton might have been able to spawn like down there in the really dark stuff. We might have to swap those blocks out. Oh, look at that, an invisible spider. We might have to swap these blocks out for uh, glass or some non-spawnable surface. Okay, okay, well, it's kind of working. Uh, we need to get rid of that skeleton, though. <laughs> um, I probably think if we, like, stand right here, this might be the best spot to get the spiders to go where we want them to. Uh, I'm gonna have to play around with this for a little bit, though, and kind of see what we got going on here. Uh, obviously, it works. The spiders do clump up, but, yeah, we don't want that skeleton in there. Can I get down there and, like, get that skeleton, maybe? Okay, <laughs> there we go. Got him. Yeah, those spiders, though. All right, well, this is working pretty much what we want. Uh, we could just sit here and sort them all. Just sit here and let them collect. Yeah, I'm actually very pleased that this is working exactly as I expected it to. Um, yeah, with all the stuff that I've done with cave spiders before in the past, pretty easy to try and get this to be figured out. Um, so, man, I didn't realize how many times spiders spawn with potion effects. That's kind of crazy, huh? There's, like, regeneration there. I think that's an invisibility, the blue one. And then, uh, strength is the red one. Huh. All right, guys. Let me go ahead and play with the round with this for a little bit longer. See if I can get something to happen here. I'm going to replace those blocks we don't want mobs to spawn on with non-spawnable blocks. And I'll see you guys in just a little bit. All right, guys. So I got some stuff done here. Uh, I made a little ladder down so we can get to where the spider drops are going to end up. The spiders are up there above me. We have a little door here so we can get in and out. Um, I didn't really think about a proper way when we kill the spiders where the drops are going to go. They're just going to land down here on these stairs and on these glass block or on that glass block right there. Spider. <laughs> so that skeleton that we saw earlier, I'm pretty sure that was from a uh, spider jockey. Um, I've seen another skeleton in here and I made sure all of the spawnable space that could spawn regular monsters has been turned to glass. And yeah, we still got another skeleton after that. Um, I do have the mob sounds turned way down now because, well, I'll, I'll show you why. Let's go back to the normal 30, what I have it at. And listening to that for more than 10 seconds. Sorry, can't do it. <laughs> so we'll turn that back down to like four. Back to game. All right. Yeah, so we've collected a decent amount of mobs here. Uh, if we look at our entities, there's like 80 or so spiders there, give or take. It, I don't know. There might be some other regular drops down there from us killing skeletons or something. But we got a decent amount of spiders here. So uh, I want to see if this is going to work, if we're going to get a, a nice amount of string. I have my inventory pretty much cleared out. Get rid of that bone. Yeah, no mob drops on us, right? So I made some damage potions and I made poison potions. Now, the thing is, some of these spiders here have the uh, purple swirly, so they have regeneration. 
So those guys are never going to get damaged. I'm going to have to kill some of those manually. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do the poison potion. Let's see, where's a good spot to throw this from? Right here? Oh, but I got myself too. Do spiders not... Can you not poison spiders? Am I being a derp? Maybe you can't poison spiders. Alright, well, <laughs> if you can't po poison spiders, we got another alternative here. We can just throw these splash potion of harming the instant damage 2 versions on these guys. Uh, as I throw, I'm going to switch over to my greed sword uh, just to make sure that we get uh, looting 3 on them. So maybe you can't poison them. I, for some reason, I thought you could. Maybe that's why people set up uh, the mob crushers for these back in the day. Whatever. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw some of these. Okay, there's one. There's two. There we go. I think that got pretty much all of them. Let's go ahead and kill the rest of these guys just by hand. Not too many spiders left. All right, we'll let those guys clump up. Let's go down and collect our loots. There might be some spiders in here. We gotta hurry up. Get in, get out, <laughs> get our drops. All right, so what did we get? We got... Oh, three stacks of string. Well, and plus three, so that's not bad. And only eight... Oh, no, we got a stack plus eight spider eyes. So that's awesome. That's another reason why I wanted to do this. Was to get these spider eyes. You can only get those from manually killing spiders. You can't just drop them. Uh, otherwise, you'll only get string. So you do have to, like, manually kill them. For those, and we need those for making poison potions and damage potions. Um, so yeah, that's good. We can just sit here in AFK and collect all the string we want. Let's see, that... What is it? Uh, plus 40 or so. That'll make 100. So how many is that that we need? That's 32. That's 40. Okay, so that's 100 string. Um, not quite 200 then, right? Almost, almost 200 string. We need to do that like once more and we'll have enough to make all of the dispensers we need. And I'll probably do a little bit more just to collect a little bit extra. Uh, I guess that alternatively we could just, you know, manually kill these guys. Since they are collecting in the same spot, we don't really have to do the potions on them. Yeah, <laughs> I was really thinking that we could use the, uh the poison potions on, but I guess not, huh? Why are those guys not coming through? They're kind of clumped up back there, aren't they? Oh, here they come, here they come. Alright, so the system isn't perfect, but it works good enough. I can just hit here in AFK, we'll collect a whole bunch of spiders, we can go ahead and kill the spiders, get all the string we need. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that, we'll make those dispensers, and hopefully, we'll be able to get that system hooked up today. See you guys in just a little bit. All right, guys, so we went ahead and we made all of the dispensers we need. So there's 16 per floor, and we got them all in there. And they're all facing forward, and this bottom row I've filled up with one water bucket, each one of these. Um, we have 16 long on uh, the redstone here, so a redstone signal wouldn't be able to travel from one end all the way to the other. So I went ahead and I stuck the torch tower, the redstone torch tower, right in the center. Uh, that way it only has to go like eight blocks either direction. Uh, we could off-center it if we wanted to. I figured, you know, mostly in the center would be fine. Okay, so it's not the prettiest thing, and there's probably a better way to torch tower this up. But basically what we want is the power to go up and each floor to be on at the same time and each floor to be off at the same time. So if I remove that torch, for instance, and we come back over here, all of those should now be off. Yeah, that's what we want. Um, so let's go ahead and put the torch back on. We'll hear these tick all the way up on every floor. So that's pretty cool. And this bottom floor right here, since it does have the water in the dispensers, went, whoop, <laughs> fell down the water. Uh, yeah, each one of these sent out its bucket of water. Um, so each one of these now has an empty bucket. If we click that again, we'll press the button this time. That'll pull the water back, and now all the water goes away. So that's awesome. That's exactly what we want. Uh, we need to do this on each and every floor. So that means we need 16 buckets on each floor, piggy. <laughs> so yeah, we are getting some animals to spawn here. That pig's been kind of wandering around. I haven't really looked to see if we got anything else spawned here. I assume if we had one pig, 
probably have more than one or some other stuff, but maybe not. Maybe we just had the one solo pig. Kind of looks like it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up some water, fill up all those dispensers full of it, and then we need to figure out what we're going to do as far as flushing these pads. Maybe we'll do it like once every daylight -like cycle, similar to what we did with um, uh, the pumpkin and sugar, no, pumpkin and melon farms over in the jungle base. I don't know. We could also set up one of those piston tape things where... It's a circle of glass blocks and has one solid block in there. Or we could do some dispenser time or hopper timers. I don't know. It seems like the mobs don't spawn that quickly. And maybe flushing this out once a day and getting all the mobs out would be good enough. I mean, that's 10 minutes worth of letting things spawn. Yeah, we'll have to figure that out. All right, guys. Let me go ahead and fill up some more buckets full of water. Fill up each and every one of these rows uh, full of water. I'm also going to put a layer of glass right on top of these dispensers because as we saw there, the pig was able to jump out and walk around. We don't want that. We want everything that spawns in here to stay in there and then get flushed out and into the nether. All right, so let me go ahead and continue working on this and I'll see you guys in just a little bit. All right, guys, so I've been spending some time here. I have been messing around with this device. I have been hooking up some redstone to try and make this completely automatic so we won't have to mess with it at all ever again right so that's pretty cool so here's what we got going on we have a daylight sensor right here this is the main input for the system when it becomes daytime this thing sends off a redstone signal and then it kicks off the entire thing so this will only work when it becomes daytime right so yeah so <laughs> let's look at what's going on here the redstone signal from the daylight sensor comes down this little strip and it goes right into this block. Okay, so that powers this dropper which sends that stick up into this hopper which will send a quick pulse through this redstone comparator. So this is a monostable circuit. It takes a long pulse and just makes it a quick blip. So that kicks off the entire system, right? Yeah. I know, kind of boring for some people. Redstone's kind of cool. It's taken me a long time to figure this whole thing out. So basically what happens, this sends that one redstone blip. And that goes to this repeater, and over here to this repeater, and over here, and up the redstone chain. So that pulses this whole thing. That one redstone blip pulses this whole thing, turns the, red, or turns the water on, so it starts flushing the mobs. This repeater also sends a pulse over here into this RS NOR latch. It's a delayed RS NOR latch. We're using 24 sticks in here in the item hoppers. You can change the length of this thing simply by removing items or putting items in. The more items, the longer the delay. Right, so uh, the quick blip turned everything on. Uh, items from this item hopper start flowing over into this one and then back again. Once the items make the full circle, this whole thing sends off a constant redstone pulse, similar to what we have here, just a long redstone pulse. And that goes into another mono stable, which sends another quick blip. So <laughs> yeah, basically this whole thing is a double pulse. So the first one comes from the daylight sensor when it becomes daytime, uh, sends a pulse up the chain. And then like 15 seconds later, that delayed RS NOR latch will send another quick blip up the chain. So it'll turn the lights, or I'm sorry, it'll turn the water on and off. So we can see this simply by putting this daylight sensor, removing it and putting it back. Okay, so all the water turns on, which is pretty cool. You come up here and just kind of get a better view of things maybe. So the water's still going. Any animals that are spawned on the grass are now being pushed off the edge all the way down there and then going into the nether and after a short little time it sends another quick blip and turns this off so what's really awesome about this is when it becomes nighttime the system resets actually I think it's a little bit before nighttime I think before I can even sleep in the bed the system resets so as soon as I sleep in the bed or we wait till morning whichever we want to do the system will kick back on and any animals that have spawned on here will be flushed back off the pad. So it's completely 100% automatic. I love it. This is going to be pretty awesome. Um, there's still another piece of this puzzle. We need to set up another nether portal uh, on the nether side, 
with like an animal pen. So all the animals that do get flushed off those pads and get into that trench and go into the nether, we want those to be separated. We want them to be in like their own holding cell. That's something I'll probably work on off camera. It's not that interesting. Uh, this is gonna be a slow process. <laughs> We've seen animals spawn, but it's not like they spawn instantly. And I kind of feel like um, I'm gonna have to be AFKing over there in the desert area to actually get things to spawn. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna have to go around and push the grassy area back just a little bit more. I don't know, there's still a lot more to play around with this. And we've worked on this, I think, now for what, three episodes? So yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and end it here. We'll probably work on something different next episode. Uh, kind of change it up, stop working on the same things for so long. I know some people find this kind of boring, some people find it kind of cool. I like it. We haven't seen really any animal spawning, or at least passive animal spawning stuff happening since, you know, the beta Minecraft. I haven't seen anybody do this before. So to me, this is really awesome. And the fact that it's, we've gotten it to work, look at that. We've gotten cow, sheep, and a pig. No, cow, bunny, and a pig. Yeah, that's really awesome, guys. And then this is going to automatically push those guys into the nether. You know what? We should try that right now. Just make sure this delays long enough. I haven't seen this work yet. Let's do it. Okay, so I just slept. It's morning. Whoa, that cow took... It's taking suffocation damage. That's not good. Okay, that is long enough that it's pushing all the mobs off. They're going to try and fight the water, but they won't be able to fight it for forever. Although that bunny's doing a pretty good job, huh? <laughs> So we might even be able to turn that delay down a little bit, but that's kind of got me worried that if the cow's floating in there and taking suffocation damage, hmm, we might be killing animals and stuff, which would not be good. We might have to make these spawn pads three blocks tall. I'll definitely have to keep an eye on that and see how it's going to work. Uh, but now all those animals should <laughs> be in the nether. Let's go check this out real quick. Oh yeah, this is awesome, guys. Now, if this is happening automatically and we're just kind of hanging out in the overworld, I don't know, doing whatever. Oh man, so we're going to be getting animals spawning and just collecting all the time. That's going to be kind of cool. Although, if we let it go too long, it could be kind of crazy. And we got bunnies and a cow and a pig here in the nether. That's pretty awesome, guys. I think this is really going to work well. I'm very pleased with the way this has turned out. But yeah, like I said, I think we've been working on this a little bit too much. I think next episode we'll change it up. We'll do something else. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it. And we'll see you next time.